Hey, what's up guys? So I was just going to take a little time and kind of go through this step by step on finishing this bookcase. So uh, first of all, for primer, I used latex acrylic fresh start. That's a Benjamin Moore product. And it, I just have used that for years and uh, it seems to work pretty good. A lot of people were asking about how to seal the MDF. If you've worked with MDF, you know that on the face of it, it has a pretty slick surface and that paints up pretty nicely. As soon as you cut into it, let's call it the end grain, that is really going to absorb the paint. So when I made the molding for the flat panels, I was prepared to put a lot of paint on, on that molding. So when I sprayed it the first time with the fresh start, within 10 minutes it had just sucked into the material. I let that dry and then I gave it a quick sanding. Um, I probably let it dry maybe three or four hours. And then I sprayed it again and that time I actually took the uh, paintbrush out and kind of brushed around the, the uh, flat panel molding, that five degree angle molding, uh, just to get more material in there. And by the third coat of primer, everything was sealed up nicely. Now, I'm sanding between each coat with 150 grit or 220 grit sandpaper. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention is after the first coat of primer, I look for any uh, voids, any nail holes, any little seams, and I fill those with joint compound. I'm like a broken record. I've been saying this now for as long as I've been making videos. I almost always use joint compound on small nail holes and things like that um, simply because it seems to work good and it sands really easily. The reason why I like to fill the nail holes after the first coat of primer is as soon as you put that coat of primer on, any little imperfection or nail hole becomes very obvious because it's a very dark, you know, it's black compared to the white. So anywhere there would be a nail hole, there'd be a black spot or dark gray spot, let's call it. Uh, so that's the primer. Once the whole cabinet had been primed and sanded, I then sprayed it uh, with, um, with another latex paint. Now I could have used a flat paint. I could have used uh, the color is Dove White. I could have used Dove White flat wall paint and sprayed that and then clear coated over it with lacquer like I did. But I ended up using the um, uh, Benjamin Moore Advanced Satin simply because I had some here in the shop from another project. So uh, after priming, sanding, I sprayed the cabinet with Benjamin Moore Advanced and I think I gave it two coats sanding in between coats. I let it dry for a full day and then I sprayed the cabinet with lacquer. Some people have said, I've heard people say that you can't spray a solvent based lacquer over latex paint. That's something I've always done. I started to do that when I worked with my, with my boss, Bob Waltzak at The Woodworker. Uh, he was very into finishing. We did all kinds of different finishes back, back in the mid 80s. Uh, mid to late 80s and uh, we always sprayed lacquer right over latex paint. I mean you don't go too heavy. I think the rule of thumb with with any finish is several thin coats not few thick coats. So that was the um, that was the finish. Uh, I didn't talk about the spray systems. So for spraying the paint I used this Rockler HVLP sprayer. So people have asked me, what do I think of it? It's okay. It's not great. It's only $120. You can't expect it to be great. But it's okay and it will get the job done. And if you're thinking about getting into spraying and you don't know if you want to spend a couple hundred dollars, maybe you want to try this one out. Uh, one major drawback to this is you cannot buy a gun separately. So you, when you buy the HVLP system, it will come with uh, the turbine, which is like a vacuum in reverse, and um, so it comes with the turbine, the hose, the gun, and the cup. You can buy a second cup, but you can't buy a second gun, which means once this gun doesn't work any longer, you have to buy the whole system, which is, they should really sell a second gun in my view. 
So it's okay. I'm gonna give it an okay mark. You know, you get what you pay for. Uh, as far as what I use to spray lacquer, this is a bit of a better machine. Now I don't really have a ton of information on it. This is called the Eagle Turbo Eagle Spray System. I think I've had it for 15 years and I've probably gone through a half a dozen guns and I only spray clear finishes through this gun and generally only lacquer. I generally don't spray a, uh, a water-based lacquer or a polyurethane through this. I like to keep it designated just to regular lacquer. The lacquer finish that I use is Mohawk's Finisher's Choice and I usually will use a semi-gloss finish. Again, I think you can use the Finisher's Choice right out of the can, but I always like to thin it a little bit. So the Finisher's Choice, I should talk about thinning the paint, I'll get there. Thinning the Finisher's Choice lacquer, I thin it by maybe 10 or 15 percent. And rule of thumb is about three coats, never two, sometimes four. Always sanding in between coats with uh, 220 sandpaper and uh, sometimes, no, 320. I think I, I use 320 for the most part. And um, so that's the case. I'll spray the whole cabinet, let it, let it dry for an hour or two and then sand it with 320. And the nice thing about lacquer is you can get three coats in a day, no problem. Okay, so I think I've covered the lacquer. Now, as far as thinning the paint, it's, a, it's one of those things you do by eye. You know, you want to go in a little bit. I think you might thin the paint by 10% maybe, and then test it out. And then uh, you don't want it to be spitting. You want, it, you want to get that mist. So have a piece of cardboard set up, test it out, see what you think. And, um, and that's kind of the rule of thumb there. Now, one thing that I've talked about uh, that I use on every finish is a product called Wool Lube. Uh, I'll get the can, it's right over here. This is, this is called uh, Mohawk's Wool Lube Paste. This is my second gallon. I'm on my second gallon in 25 years or, or more. So you don't really use a ton of it. But uh, with every finish I use 4-0 steel wool and then I rub in the direction of the grain with this wool lube paste. What the wool lube does is it's a lubricant, so you don't burn through the finish. And once I finish rubbing the whole cabinet down, even the painted surfaces, I will um, take a clean rag and remove any of the residue. I think I'm missing something here. Oh yeah, so a few people at least one person said in the comments it's not quite finished because I didn't get the paint off the bottom of the leg here and I don't have a paint line like a perfectly straight paint line here that's not what I was going for I wanted that look I wanted the cabinet to look as if it had been refinished and they didn't go all the way to the cabinet it would have been very easy to take the cabinet or to take the leg then paint it and then sand it and get a very straight line. But I don't think that that would look good. It just, I don't think it would look, wasn't the look I was going for. Same thing with the white oak at the bottom. I don't think this is shabby chic. When I think of shabby chic, I think of something that's not made well and then has a half-assed finish. I think that this is made well. I mean, it does have, um, it does have pocket hole screws, but I don't have a problem with pocket hole screws. I know some people do, but I don't. Um, in general, this is made well. It's got a heavy feel to it. It's not going to fall apart. So I feel like it's made well and it has a nice finish. If you, if you touch it, it, you don't feel that kind of sandpapery kind of rough feel. I always say when you touch a piece of furniture that's handmade, it should feel good. Uh, Handmade furniture has to work on every level. It has to look good, and it has to feel good, uh, and it has to function. In this case, there's, there's not too much function here, thankfully. It's always nice when you don't have to make drawers or doors. So uh, that was my decision on the finish, to not have a sharp line. I think somebody had said, I should have painted the face frames first before attaching them to the legs. 
And that is something that I could have done if that's the look I was going for. But this is the look I was going for. And in my view, it, um, it worked out great. One more thing I wanted to mention is I do have a Patreon account and I don't talk about it all that often because it is a little weird asking people to become patrons and go to my Patreon account. Uh, but it definitely does help me out. I just bought a new camera with the money from my Patreon account. So if you're a patron, thank you. I just bought the Canon G7X. It's a smaller camera and I'll be taking that on location for projects. I'm going up to Real Antique Wood in probably a few weeks to work on a project with Anthony, who is sort of the in-house mechanic, woodworker, really nice guy and very talented. So that'll be fun and this camera is going to come in real handy for that project. So if you think there's some value in this show, and as you know, all of my woodworking content is free, all my tutorials and, and plans. If you think there's some value in that, I hope that you will consider becoming a patron. And um, nothing is different with my patrons. It's always the same content. So it's just uh, supporting the channel. There's nothing really on my Patreon channel that isn't here, but you are supporting the show. And that makes it easier for me to make content because I do pass up on a lot of sponsored projects simply because I like to work with sponsors in a certain way, which is considered a shout out overlay, which is very similar to what they used to do on uh, This Old House or the New Yankee Workshop, where you kind of shout out the sponsor, show their product, and then get into the content. That usually happens in the first 19 seconds of my show. And then if I use the product, then I'll talk about it a little bit or I'll talk about it at the end. And most of the products I use are things that I've used for ages, like this wool loop from Mohawk. So I guess that's it. As always, thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you next time.